آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون You're just a click away on your remote. Get the popcorn. It's a blast. This one has moral stature. They used chemical weapons, so they will pay. Don't miss Chris Matthews. He's tingling all over. The president did the right thing and he upheld the constitution. Only a living god could figure out how to pull that off. Welcome to the Syrian theater. All the players are assembled. Which one will intervene and turn a two-day blitz into a global conflagration? We realize you don't have whatever it takes to actually enlist in the armed forces and do six insane tours in Afghanistan, building A-frames and wondering when one of the villages will shoot you in the head. No problem. You can experience a very good simulacrum on your own mind. The anticipation. The adrenaline flow, the sweaty palms, then the limbic thrust of revenge. And, as a bonus, no court martial when it turns out that you killed an Afghan who was just reaching into his coat pocket for a screwdriver to attach his new front door. The Syrian run-up is almost as good as the first missile launch. Click to Wolf Blitzer as he recalls his coverage of Gulf War I when he made his bones purely on the basis of his name. Catch the living cadaver, Scott Pelly, as he flashes back on his work at the Davidian siege at Waco. Count down to the first explosion with the eternal newsboy riding his bike and flipping papers on front porches, Brian Williams. Feel the undertone of sodden grief with Diane Sawyer, weeps for everybody all the time as she does war as only a former America's junior miss can. And then, boom, you're there. The attack is on. The sky over Damascus lights up. What unknown newsman standing on a rooftop narrating the unfolding scene will emerge from the carnage with name recognition and a sudden career bump that makes his colleagues want to murder him in his sleep. It's the news, tune in. America is united again. Feel it. What took us so long to find each other once more? Post your experience on Facebook. Share your ecstasy with faux friends. Recite the Pledge of Allegiance against a hip-hop track and hope it goes viral. Finally, all the goody two-shoes questions about who used chemical weapons and which side we're backing in Syria and who was Al-Qaeda and the CIA sending weapons and killers from Libya to Syria are gone. Erased. This is the show. This is what counts. Pretext? Invented provocation? False flag? Don't bother me. I am eating war. If only we still had the Rat Pack around. Frank, Dean, Sammy, Lawford and Joey Bishop. They could do a Saren night at the Desert Inn and wow the crowd with their support for the guys who launched the Tomahawks. If your brother-in-law is over at the house as you watch the missile strike and he says, you know, um, there's no proof Assad used poison gas. Poke him in the eye with a sizzling hot dog on a stick and yell, USA, USA, USA. You might also try Obamacare, immigration reform, climate change, carbon tax, NSA, surveillance state, gun control, drone attacks. Suddenly, they're in. They were out, but now the commander-in-chief has his hand on the pulse of the nation. We're off life support. Who cares about Fast and Furious, the IRS non-profit division Benghazi? They're in the rearview mirror, and we're accelerating down the superhighway to fame and fortune. Jobs, we can live off our own fumes. Mind-controlled androids? This is who we are. Love it, live it, watch it, soak it in. God bless Congress for giving Obama back constitutional authority to kill the enemy of the terrorists we're backing.